Let's get real about what is actually really required of you when you're putting together your online marketing. and the steps that are really required when it comes to getting your online marketing happening. Now, the number of people that I speak with who have created a really great offline presence, they could be doing workshops, consulting, going to networking events, BNI, relying on word of mouth referrals. You know, those kinds of people are generally well known in a local community area or in a particular community. So. That might be where you're part of a mentoring group or a mastermind group and you know you're really well known by your peers and lots of people pick up great business that way and i think that is excellent the where people come and stack i guess the issue is where people try and translate that offline notoriety into something that is online so you know that whenever people are finding you whenever people are researching you when people are coming across you they want to be able to go and find you in different places and different platforms so that they can get a really good feel for you, what you're about, the value that you bring to the table, your experience, a little bit about what you're like, right? I mean, we're in the transformation industry. Whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a health professional, whether you're a writer, whether you're a thought leader, whether you're somebody who does keynote speaking, you are in the business of transformation. If you are motivating people and you're helping people bust through their blocks, and get to where it is that they want to be. Now, obviously you want that to be translated really easily, effortlessly, and elegantly, and graciously online, right? So how the hell do we do that? Well, the really big thing first and foremost that I have learned along this way, now I've been marketing myself online for more than seven years. We started in 2010. But before that, I worked for one of the major banks in Australia. So very corporate for 12 years, really driven by systems and procedures and processes and things like that. And I built my part of that particular business. I treated it like my own. I built that business all offline, right? Through uh, putting together some different events and I'd get other, other speakers in. I would put on different um, information nights. I was going and speaking at local networking events. I was, I was always in person trying to do things and that is a great way of marketing yourself but it's not sustainable if you are looking at a national reach or even a global reach or even over a couple of countries right you know or even a couple of states no matter what country you live in so one of the big things that i've realized through this online marketing stuff is like number one you need to know what your intention is for your marketing is it just to educate is it just to put as much information out there as humanly possible? Because that will change the way that you implement and create a strategy, and then the tactical implementation that you'll do off the back of that. Now, most people with their marketing are putting their stuff out there. They're wanting to market themselves in order to get new clients, in order to make more money, in order for there to be that energetic exchange that happens with money and service so that people actually do the work, right? That's usually why most people are looking at marketing themselves online. They're not just usually doing it to be, uh, to, to give to the world without any expectation of return. So what's your intention? The next part about that, we're going to talk about the main people that I work with, which are people who are wanting to make money and wanting to get more clients. Now, if you're looking at online marketing with that, one of the big things that you need to be looking at is what are the numbers? You know, how many people do you need to be bringing into your business from a marketing perspective so that you can hit your numbers? You need to know how much it is that you're selling your stuff for and, and all of that kind of thing, of course. But if you're looking for 100 new clients over the course of a year, then how many leads do you need to generate? How many people do you need to get on your list, right? So you've got to know your numbers, otherwise you don't know where you're going. Your strategy is going to have holes in it. The tactical implementation probably won't give you what you want because it's misaligned. It's just kind of like haphazard, so don't do that. Once you've got that stuff sorted, the next thing that you need to be thinking about is, okay, like who the fuck are my people? Who the hell are my people that I am wanting to bring into this business? Who do I really want to work with? Now, that's the first little part of niching. The second part of this is how this applies to your marketing, all right? Not just who, you, who you're actually gonna work with, because 
it's like I'm having a conversation with you. Yes, it's a one-sided conversation, but it's like I'm having a conversation with you if you're still watching this, right? Whereas usually with offline marketing, you are having this conversation one-on-one -on -one or in a room to an event or over a coffee or something like that. And it can be a lot easier to adapt your conversation with the person that you're speaking to. But in an online marketing scenario, whether it's a webinar or whether it's a blog or whether it's a podcast or whatever, you, you don't have that luxury. So when you're thinking about your online marketing, I want you to pretend that the person that you wanna work with is like sitting like right behind there, right behind you, right behind that camera that is filming you or the microphone or what you're doing. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to enable you to have a really consistent marketing conversation with everyone who fits with you, no matter where it is that they find you. So whether it's in an article, whether it's an audio, whether it's a blog, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on Instagram, wherever it is, it will demonstrate that you know them really, really well, that you're an expert at what you do, that you know your staff, that you're not just out there selling bullshit snake oil, that you have value that you can provide. So that's why niching an avatar is, is so critically important, in my opinion and my experience, because otherwise you're like, well, this person might be 30, this person might be 55, maybe they have this health issue, maybe they have that health issue. It makes your conversation so vague and so generalistic. I mean, that might be your, your service and that's a different story, but if you really wanna be known as an expert and recognized online with the way that you are offline, then this is a really key distinction here. Like niching an avatar is, I can talk about it for hours, so I'm not going to do that to you. So you need to have that sorted. The next thing that you really need to have sorted is knowing how you're going to now implement these things and bring people through. So some big things that you must be doing. You must be blogging. Guys, like people are going to go to your website and they want to hear you, they want to see you, they want to read what, you write, what you've written. They want to know to the best of their ability that you are the best person to really help them. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing, you've got to have a presence on Facebook. Now, there are 1.86, as at today's stats, well, this month's stats, 1.86 billion people on Facebook. Your people are on Facebook. If you're sitting there like, no, my people are not on Facebook, and no, then you've got rocks in your head. With all due respect, they are. They are not on there to do business. They are not on there to buy your stuff, primarily. They are on there killing time. They are checking up on what their kids are doing. They're looking at what their neighbors are doing. They're looking at, they're playing games. They're watching stupid videos. They are on Facebook wasting time. They are addicted to it. So when you're having a presence on, on Facebook particularly, and you're posting regularly and you're sharing valuable content, they will see you in their newsroom and be like, oh look, there's that person again. I was talking to a mentor of mine and she said, you know, Nicola, like every time I open my phone and I open Facebook, like there you are. And I'm like, uh, yes. And she said like, she's been following me for years. So she always sees me and it's hilarious because I actually said to her recently, I said, oh look, I've, I've actually had some, I'm taking a bit of time off. So I've kind of rolled it back a bit. She said, well, you wouldn't ever know because like I just opened my phone and you know, bang, there you are. So you want to have a presence on there. If for nothing else, that people are starting to see you, they're starting to recognize you, and then when you walk into a, an event or a dinner or a group or something like that, they're like, oh, I recognize you. Like, how do I know you? Where do I know you from? And you'd be like, oh, you know, you probably see me on Facebook. <laughs> and it helps to bridge that gap. It helps to create some rapport without you needing to be in the room all day, every day, talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Right? So really important is you've got to have a business page, by the way. You want to have a presence on LinkedIn. So this can be where you share the content that you share on Facebook. Go and share some of that, not all of it. Go and share some of that on LinkedIn. Now, most people who are on LinkedIn will be on there for maybe 10 minutes a day. They get in, they do what they need to do, they get out. So it's important for you to have a presence on there, but it's not the most leverageable platform for you to be on unless you are doing, you know, you're, you're going in there and trying to find candidates for a job role or something like that, and that's a bit different. 
The other thing that I want you to do is have a presence on Instagram. Now, Instagram is obviously photo based quite clearly. So start posting photos that are reflective of you and of your, of your, of your values. So it might be family photos if you're happy to do that. If you're really passionate about health and lifestyle and work-life balance, I post photos of our morning walks that we go walking on. And I mean, I think they're a little bit boring, uh, but the number of people that have told me, hey, Nicola, I just wanted to tell you, we've started doing morning walks because we see you do them. And you know, I don't know how you do it, but you know, I see you do them and you've really inspired me and motivated me. And I'm like, wow, I didn't put them out there to have that impact. It just kind of happened and evolved. So it's really interesting. You also want to share some, maybe some motivational stuff, some inspirational stuff, some quick quips, some hints, tips, advice, facts, you know, things about your industry, things about your staff and, and what is complimentary to you and what you're doing so that people can again see that it's a really kind of holistic person that they're going to be talking to and relating to rather than just like a, a one dimensional person that only ever talks about the service that you provide. Tell stories in the things that you're putting out there, right? Then the other thing that you wanna be doing is making sure that from each of these places, you have a way of getting people onto your list, onto your database, because let's face it, social media is freaking distracting, right? It's a bit like um, going to the zoo and seeing all of the different animals and, and all the different things and being like, oh, Disneyland, you're going like, I wanna do that, I wanna do that, I wanna do that, I wanna do that. That's what Facebook is like. It, it's like sugar, dopamine hits. It's, it's ridiculous in people's news feeds. So they can get distracted really, really easily. So one of the things that I would like you to be considering, and this can be based on your strategy when we talked about step number one, you've really got to be bringing people onto your list and then warming them up and building the relationship with them and providing value throughout the emails that you send out. Don't call them newsletters. Newsletters like, Everybody who's boring does newsletters, call it something else. You know, mine is right between the eyes. Um, I, I go and I, I send blogs out to people. I let you guys know when there's next live trainings or different offers or whatever, but we want to be providing value to people through there. Now, one of the good things with that is that they can open that email and go, oh, that's right, there's that, there's that, there's her name's Sue. Sue's back in my inbox again. Yeah, I must go and check out what she's doing on social media. So then they can go and have a look at your page. And at that point, they'll go and scroll through probably a lot of your posts. Now, guys, one of the really big things with this though is that people may not interact with the posts that you put up. They may not answer the emails that you send them out. And that is okay. It's not ideal, but it is okay. It doesn't mean anything. Your level of engagement that you have through your page when it comes to likes, shares, comments, I mean, it's great, but it is not necessary for you to make money. I want you to think about your the profiles that you're putting out there as a way for people to research you, as a way for people to get a feeling for who you are, what you're about, what your attitude is like, and things like that, all right? Now, all of that, when you've got all of those things in place, so remember knowing what your intention is and then building a strategy around it, knowing who your niche is, getting out there and being on all of the other platforms and everything like that, warming up your list. The big thing with this is that you really need to be consistent. If you are not consistent, it all falls over and it just, it just doesn't work. So you are going to need to know what it is that you're going to do. You do need to plan for this stuff. It is absolutely critically important and imperative for you to have all of these things in place in order for you to create a really strong online presence so that people feel like they know you before they even speak to you. All right, so my name is Nicola, in case you didn't remember that, <laughs> because my name's not splashed everywhere. Go ahead and leave any comments below, any questions that you have, leave them underneath here. If you'd love a one-on-one -on -one session with me looking at how to create an online presence that reflects your offline stuff, then you'll see a really big banner below offering a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Go ahead and click on that. Give me your information. And if you qualify for a one-on-one -on -one session, then we'll go ahead and get you booked in and we'll have a chat about how to create a really rocking online presence that communicates the value that you bring to the people that you really wanna work with in a way that really highlights who you are, what you're about, and just makes a decision to work with you really, really easy. All right, I look forward to speaking with you really, really soon. Take care and see you on the next live training.